What's going on everybody? Just wanted to show you guys how to make your own homemade scuff controller, seeing as how it's pretty expensive and not everyone can really afford to get one or maybe doesn't want to. This is just a tutorial for those of you guys that want to do it yourself. Anyway, I want to just say that before we get started, pretty much anything you do, you do so at your own risk. I'm not going to be responsible if you break your controller. You know, you can't sue me for this, so proceed at your own risk. Anyway, so let's get started. This is just going to be part one. These are the parts that you're going to need. You're going to need a drill. That's going to be for making holes. You're going to need this Torx T8 screwdriver. That's to get your controller open. Then you're going to need either a hole punch or possibly a nail so that you can, not a hole punch, sorry, I meant to say a punch, so you can get started on making holes. Uh, makes it easier to drill later on. A 440 tap so that you can put the screws in easier. Also obviously a 440 drill a bit so you can make the holes yourself. Now I have a multi-tool in here that's not really necessary that's just for my own purposes. And then you're going to need these 440 set screws that's for having the uh, length of pull on your trigger because you want to be able to get your shots off quicker. And then right here these are the 440 socket cap screws you're going to need those to make your trigger stops. Then you have your regular set of allen wrenches so that you can get the screws in nice and easy. And for a later part, and I'm going to get into this in the second part, you're going to need some wire and you're also going to need your soldering iron so you can get your buttons mapped such as A, B, or jump, whatever it is that you want to do depending on Halo or Call of Duty, what it is you want to do. And then right here, you got your control, obviously you're going to need that so you can continue on uh, and actually mod this thing. So, let's get started. Alright, so there are plenty of tutorials out there on how you do this. It just depends. Uh, for me, I have a wireless Xbox 360 controller, so I'm just going to remove the battery pack. And I'm going to go ahead and proceed and take out all the screws that are around here. And uh, there's plenty of tutorials on how to take these controllers apart, so I'm not going to go into that. And so the next part you guys will see is the controller already being apart. Alright, so one of the first things you're going to do uh, is you're going to take this back shell off, back off the controller. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically, I don't know if you can see this too well, but there's a ridge like literally, hold on, let me see if I can get it, the little screwdriver over here. There's a ridge right behind this part right here, and that's where you're going to put a little punch and basically just make a hole, and then you'll drill into that, and that way you'll be able to put in the set screw which is going to push against your trigger here and make it so that you can pull it quicker and that way get your shots off easier then the next part after we do that if you can see there's these little holes right here kind of plastic from when the controller was molded that's ultimately where you're going to end up drilling again because you're going to put some long post uh, tactile switches in here and I'll get into that more later on you can find these at Radio Shack and things like that but these are actually pretty good markings for where you're going to drill next and then actually up here, uh, basically you're going to drill another hole right behind this opening over here for one of the screws. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to put a Lexan strip, which is going to be your way of uh, pushing on the buttons. It's going to be like a paddle that goes basically from all the way down here in this way. And then you're just going to be able to push on the tactile switches. And later on, I'm going to explain how the wiring works and how the soldering works as well, but that's going to be in part two. For now, we're just going to look at this and concentrate on making basically your trigger stops, the trigger push mechanism, and also pre-drilling the holes for your tactile switches. Alright, so I don't know if it's entirely visible here. Hopefully, now that I got this extra flashlight here, you can see it. I've already got the hole drilled, so it's just right there. And then the same thing going on on this other side. Actually, on the left side, I did it a little bit better because, and I'll show you guys why, on the left side it's actually just a little bit higher than it is on the right side and that's really ideal that's where you want to be as far as the hole goes and so the next part is you just take your tap and you tap the hole from this side so from the front inwards uh, I know it sounds a bit weird but that's what you want to do because that's the way that your set screws are going to go so that's the next part alright so now that you got your holes tapped basically all you do is you take the little set screws I was talking about earlier and in my case you take the allen wrench 
and you basically just go in and you put them into the holes that you tapped earlier see if I can make this a little bit more visible as you can see it's just sitting right there and that's what you're going to use to make the trigger pull much shorter and hence uh, increase your ability to shoot people very quickly so it helps quite a bit in SWAT matches in Halo if you're the Halo person and if you're one of the COD people then it just helps out to get shots off quicker um, pretty much any uh, type of weapon you're using and so you do the same thing for the left and the right side and you're good to go alright so the next part that concerns us is the triggers themselves so that you can make the trigger stops and the idea here is you want to take your hole punch or nail or whatever you want and basically just make a little hole uh, punch a hole right around the tip of this thing not too much you want to go maybe like I don't know like a fifth or a fourth of an inch in just so that you can have some extra space for the screw and then you're good to go you just drill the hole and you put the screw in alright so for the sake of time I just used my drill to get all these these last screws back on the triggers so now you've got your trigger stops and it's time to put the controller back together and see if everything's working out alright guys so I've got the controller more or less back together now and as you can see if I put the allen wrench in here let's take a little bit of time when I move it in the trigger moves in and you're done you've got yourself a really really short trigger pull so there you go and the trigger stop is working as it's supposed to so you've got your homemade scuff controller with adjustable triggers and this is the first part done and you're good to go thanks for watching please subscribe and comment if you liked something disliked it and just let me know what you want to see next thanks and bye